Hey everybody, welcome to the show. I'm so glad that you're with us today. Tiffany Dykes is gonna be in with us. She is doing a couple of great dishes for you. We're gonna make a real good Mexican meatloaf. We're gonna do a pumpkin tort too. That's a beautiful dish. Cannot wait to show it to you guys. Come on in, we're gonna get started. We got a lot of work to do. Tiffany is hanging out over here. This is Cooking Today. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. I'm so glad that you're with us today. We have great guests. Y'all, you know I love the repeat guests, those that return, and this pretty lady has come Good back to do a great dish for us. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank Everything all much. right? Yeah, we're rocking and rolling. Getting ready for the season to start. We are, yes. it's here, it's upon us. It's crazy, so. isn't it? It and is. 2015 has flown by. I know, it's been building for a while, so now I'm ready to go out and start playing some games. That's good. Yeah. That's good, let's make a great dish. What are great. we doing today? We're doing a Mexican meatloaf. Every time the weather gets kind of cold like this, we start making a lot of meatloaf around our house. Okay. And I kind of like switching up with different flavors. So today I'm doing a Mexican meatloaf with all the great Mexican spices that we love so much. So, awesome. So what we're going to start putting together today. Okay, great. What all do right. you want me to do first? What, I mean, I, you always give me something I to do. I always give do. you a little task. Yeah, what well, do you want me to do? I'd love for you to chop because every time you chop, it just amazes me because you just skilled with that. So okay. if you could do just a half a cup of chopped veggies. Okay. Um, I brought a red pepper, a green pepper, and an onion. So a half a cup total mix of all. Mix of okay, all. Okay, you any, got it. And you really can do just just about any veggies you want, but those seem to go really well, I think, with Mexican flavors. I'm going to be putting in a pound of ground turkey, or you could use ground beef, but you know me, I always tend to favor the ground turkey. Oh yeah, absolutely. And so where, this thing, this green bell pepper, so crispy. That looks good, huh? Where'd you get that from? That is from my mother-in-law's garden. Her really? Name is Sue Dykes, and she's just a phenomenal lady. Hey, Miss Sue. Uh, she Thank is, you. <laughs> <laughs> she is, she's not just a great gardener, she's an amazing, amazing woman. So. Cool. Yeah, she, she gave that to me, so I wanted to bring that in, but we've got the peppers that you, and the onion you're chopping up. I have got the ground turkey. I also put in an egg. Okay. Um, I'm going to do my spices now. So we've got chili powder, cumin, salt, and onion powder, and paprika. So I'm just going to sprinkle those in and start mixing those up before I put in the rest of my ingredients. And I'm going to dice these up relatively small. I mean, we were talking about your daughter just a little while ago. Yes. And how if she doesn't know the veggies are there, she's she'll be okay. She's, you know, she's a good eater. She's pretty good. But I have learned if the veggies are too big, if they're in too big of little pieces, that she'll just pick them out. Yeah. So oh, yeah. I tend to make them pretty small. And plus, I think it just... It mixes well with the... It does mix well. When you're doing a meatloaf like that, it really helps to have the veggie small. And if you have them too big, they will tend to break up the the glue that you yes. add with the breadcrumbs or whatever it is that you're exactly. using to hold it together. So exactly. they'll make space in there if you chop them too, if they're too big. And speaking of the glue, the egg binds it and the breadcrumbs you were talking about, what makes this a Mexican meatloaf is instead of using breadcrumbs or panko or mm -hmm. even oats I've done before, I use crushed tortilla chips. Okay. So if you just put in some crushed tortilla chips in place, that gives it that it kind of gives it a little bit of a tamale yeah, flavor. flavor yeah. So I'm gonna add that in. I'm also gonna add in instead of the tomato sauce base, we do a salsa. And I did a kind of a fruit flavored salsa because I'm gonna make a honey enchilada glaze to go on top of this. Okay. So I think if you do kind of a sweet fruit flavored salsa, it pairs really well and just really enhances that sweet flavor you're bringing out. That's awesome. So I did, I believe this is a pineapple peach salsa. I love how you're 
your mind thinks about food. It's really good. Oh, well, the, that means a lot coming yeah, from you. Yeah, you have a good, good mind about it. That's great. Thank you. I'm also going to throw in some diced green chilies. And last but not least, our shredded cheese. And I'm just going to eyeball it. We just do about a fourth of a cup. So I'm just going to eyeball just about that much. Right there looks good. And I'm going to remind you guys, while I am fast with the knife, I am really cautious. So you guys make sure that you're doing your bridge correctly with your knife and your fingers so you don't get yourself. Mm -hmm. We are not trying to add any blood to this cut no. board. We are wanting to stay out of the emergency room today. See, this is why I always put you in charge of this. <laughs> I, right. trust, I trust your expertise a whole lot better than mine. And we got plenty here. What about the cilantro? You want me to go ahead and you want to leave it whole? How do you want to do this? You know, if you just do just a teensy little bit, um, two or three tablespoons would be fine. Okay. And then we'll save a little bit for garnishing the top. You That's really it. what I like to use it best for. I'm going to prepare my meatloaf pan. I'm just going to take a little bit of nonstick spray and get the insides really well. A lot of the reason I do this too is because turkey doesn't, like we said, render a lot of fat, yeah, and so we don't want it there. sticking. Yes. Yeah. So great. you know, if you want to go you ahead and throw in veggies? those veggies, yeah, yeah. that'd be great. Okay. That looks awesome. Get you a little bit more of the green part there, and yeah. I, I know I had way more than the than what you asked for, but I, we can always add. You can always veggies. There's unlimited veggies. That's that's a rule in our house. We love veggies. Uh, so. Salt and pepper, Tiffany? Yes, let's add in a little salt and pepper, and I believe the recipe calls for about a fourth of a teaspoon of each. So, so we I'm going to just, it. well, I'm going to make what I always do is you give it a dusting over the top. Mm -hmm. That way you know you have it all flavored out. So yeah. maybe two rounds the bowl, just like that. Yep. Super simple. Yep. So, like I said earlier, we are going to mix this up and it's ready to go. We're going to place this in the in the pan now. But Guys, we're going to get this going. We're going to get it right in the pan here. Y'all come back with us. This is cooking today. We're going to keep on going with a great dish. Miss mm -hmm. Tiffany Dykes is in the house. This is cooking today. We'll be right back. Okay, everybody, welcome back. We have our Mexican meatloaf is in the oven working. It smells mighty good, too. It does smell it good. smells really good. And we're going to move on. we got a, a few other things we got to do to get ready to show you a great dish. So we're going to do the tort next. Yeah, we're going to yes. do a, a pumpkin tort. Pumpkin tort. Yes, I thought for the holidays. Good time of year. Yeah, it's oh, going to yeah. be perfect for that. And I like it because it's really easy to do, but it looks fancy. It looks a little bit different, a little bit swanky, a little cool. bit. So I like doing that. Let's do it. We're going to um, pair up the pumpkin cake with the kind of a cheesecake flavored icing. Oh, yeah. So we're going to go ahead and start with the icing. Layers? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Build those layers. Cool. So, and uh, we're going to be using a cheesecake pudding mix okay. for it. So if you want, and also we're mixing cream cheese. So if you want to blend up eight ounces of cream cheese. Okay. And can I use that metal bowl we have sitting right over there? You absolutely can. This one. Well, I'm going to do the cake. Okay, well, I'll let's grab enough. this one yep. right here. Yep. Yeah, okay. and Last I'm going to mix up yeah. the pudding mix. I like the pudding mix because it gives it kind of a light texture, but at the same time, it sets up really well. Yeah, it does set up good. Yes, and yeah. so this is something that you can set it out and it'll hold its shape really well. But I kind of, you know, around the holidays, just love, crave pumpkin flavor all the time. Oh, yeah, you got to have But it. you kind of got to switch it up with something different. I'm going to sneak right behind Yeah, you something guys. different from time to time other than just pumpkin pie over and over again. So this was one of those I made for the teacher's lounge up at Kennedy School. Okay. And they loved it. They went, they went nuts for it. So, and it was a big hit. So I figured I might as well bring it in and... See if it'll work for the holidays as well. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to take this, the cream cheese, and you just want me to just break it down so it's... Yeah, it's, we're just going to get it loose enough to yep. where we can kind of fold in this cheesecake pudding, and then after that, we'll be folding in some Cool Whip. Okay. But this is going to be perfect for some holidays. I don't know how you and your family celebrate. Ours always revolves around basketball. Oh, yeah. It we, has to in your family. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, we're always playing in a tournament, usually during the holidays. Um, 
this year we're going to be going out to Puerto Rico. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So that is one that's one neat opportunity for these girls as they get to see some different really different parts of the world and parts uh, of yeah, so that's real good. Yeah, it'll be really really fun, fun and trip, yeah. Hopefully Hopefully we can come back with a few wins under Victories, our belt. Victories, yes. Because yes. once we start getting into SEC play, those those wins are going to be they're hard, hard to, come, to by. come by. And and you build chemistry at this time in the year too, when the season first starts and you're playing these teams that it really doesn't count, but. Mm -hmm. Every victory or loss counts if you're an athlete. I mean, whether you you win or lose, it, whether it counts or not towards, you know, the oh, it's SEC, huge. it's huge. When you're in the SEC, every every victory, every win, you've got to fight hard for you them. you got to fight so. hard for them because they everybody's trying easy. to take you down because mm -hmm. you're in the SEC. But we're really pleased and proud of these girls already. They've already shown they know how to work hard and fight. Um, we've got eight new... Uh, team members but okay. they've all come in and blended really really well and not all of those are freshmen I mean those no, are some we've transfers had, we've had some transfers for some from some community colleges and junior colleges but they've all come together and we've got great camaraderie with them now if you want you can also uh, fold in some of that cheesecake pudding mix um, that'll help loosen it up as well okay. if you want to you got it. I need some I'm gonna be putting together the pumpkin cake base and I'm using just the spice cake mix that you see on the end cap, mainly because I'm a sucker for every time they have something seasonal. In my mind, I think, I'm never going to have this again. I've got to get it right now. <laughs> so <laughs> I grab some of that spice cake mix. I'm also going to put in a can of pumpkin. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that oh, is yeah. one of Pumpkin base is great. It is absolutely one of I've got a really good you know, homemade pumpkin cake recipe, but I'm telling you, those those seasonal cake mixes get me every time. Yeah, and then with this stuff too, I mean, it, it always, we'll, we'll find some way to use it in this kitchen during mm -hmm. the holiday season for sure, right. for sure. And with this pumpkin tort, there's a lot of different combinations you can use. You can do, you know, uh, I've done a red velvet before, I've done a red velvet cake with a cheesecake pudding or, of course, any chocolate is always good too. And is that it for the ingredients for that? Once for this, I'm probably going to add. If you want to get a little bit of water, yes. um, I'm going to loosen it up just a little bit. It doesn't always need to, but anywhere from a fourth, fourth of a cup to a half a cup of water is going to be. That's about a cup, just okay. under a cup, right there. That'll okay. help. That'll you want help me to go ahead up? and fold everything all together? Let's go ahead and fold that you in got it. while I'm mixing the rest of this pumpkin. You guys, we're going to continue here, finish up getting the pumpkin cake mix all put together. I'm going to fold the, the cool cream whip. cheese there mm -hmm. into the Cool Whip, and we're going to be ready. This is going to go in the oven. Man, we're going to come right back and show you the rest of it. We're going to build our layers. It's going to be really good. We got that meatloaf cooking, too, so y'all come right back. This is cooking today. So we're going to finish up our great dish. We have a lot of cool, lots going on. Uh, we got the cake all panned up, mm -hmm. cooked kind off. Of baked. Yes. How long did we cook the cake for? Let everybody know how long it 28 went. 28 minutes okay. at 350. 350 degrees. Mm -hmm. And we have them cooled and sitting here on the deck ready to go. Because we're going to make layers, yes. we have to cut each cake in half. Yeah, we're going to cut each cake in half. And so we'll have four layers okay. of pumpkin cake, cheesecake filling, pumpkin cake, cheesecake filling. Okay, and I'm so. going to go ahead and cut the cakes in half. And the trick to this is to make sure that your knife will go all the way across the entire cake. You, you may have to spin the cake if you need to, but it's really light and really, really good. You also want to make sure that you are have a good level point. So what I do a lot of times, I'll use the board as my level point. So where the, the, the knife handle meets the board, that's the last place I'll let it hit. And just leave the knife handle on the board. Nice. That way, you can go right through it. And now my knife doesn't quite go all the way through, so I'll you get my spin it, on. Don't you? Nice. Get my spin on. And you know, one thing I've noticed: the cooler the cake is, the easier it is to slice it and do this. So I've even a lot of times, especially when I build layer cakes, 
I will freeze yeah. my. It's, oh God, that's a great, yeah. great call. It's, it's an easy way to do really it. Really easy way to do it. You want the bottom layer down first? I would do the bottom layer down first, okay. and then I will do a nice helping of our cheesecake filling. And I'm going to really layer it on. Be real generous with it. Be very generous. Okay. And also, too, a lot of times when I'm building this, I will put this cheesecake filling in a Ziploc baggie and pipe it on mm -hmm. because it really makes just kind of like a, a ribbony effect around the cake. Oh yeah, nowadays those uh, those disposable piping bags are readily available at the grocery store. Oh yeah, so, I'm gonna go ahead and build this next. There you go, and layer. I got the next one cut and ready. Yeah, really easy. I'm gonna get a wash of my hands okay. real quick because hey. I have cake all over it. That's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. That's a good day in my book. <laughs> Uh, but I don't think anybody wants to see me lick my entire hand. So. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, another thing you can do if you want, you can uh, take your garnish, like your, your toffee bits and your pecans. You can put them in between the layers as well. Okay. I'm just going to save mine for on top. So you want the bottom layer yep, next? Yep, you want another layer. Okay. I mean, we are... That looks really? so good. It's so good. And I'm the level guy, so you forgive me if I push down right there in the middle. Uh -huh. I kind of want it to be kind of level. Well, and that's another reason I really like piping it on because it just creates. It's a lot more even. You can, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it looks real. It looks really pretty. But this is one I think it's a nice kind of a middle of the road dessert. It's not super heavy, but it's got a lot of great flavor. If you want to put that last one on. And this is a combination of the of the Cool Whip, and 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 you guys didn't mm -hmm. see me add the Cool Whip at the end, but I did add about half a container of the Cool Whip right mm -hmm. to the pudding and the cream cheese. Yes, and I've even sometimes done a whole layer of the Cool Whip, um, just kind of. However you like to, however fluffy you would like to get it. That but looks I'm gonna, great. Mm -hmm, and I'm going to try and ribbon it just a little bit to make it pretty. And then we're going to garnish the top. If you want to start putting on some toffee bits. You bet. Um, I think this is going to be a great way to use up extra Halloween candy. You betcha. Because you don't have to use toffee. You can use, that's just my personal favorite. But you can use any of the candy bar crushed up and chopped up. Um, we know we got way too much as is, so that it's a great, great, yeah, it's a great way to do that. So chopped pecans. Chopped pecans uh, pairs really well with anything pumpkin spice flavored. Sure does. Those I love the chopped pecans. And last but not least, we are going to drizzle on some caramel. Mm -hmm. And I like to do that in kind of a checkerboard. Oh, I'm loving it. Mm. Look at that. Yes. And then we go right back across in the other direction. Yep, and you know it's something, this has a lot of flavor, so you don't need an overwhelming amount of topping or garnish. That it looks really, Doesn't that look great? That looks And I think beautiful. it looks nice to serve to guests. It looks just a little bit fancy, but it's just so nice and easy to beautiful. do. Beautiful. Let's get our meatloaf great. out. And let's make our... Honey enchilada glaze. Make our glaze real quick. Okay, yes. I will grab the bowl. Okay. And I'm going to get that right out of here. You can work right here on the stove top. Yes, that'd be great. This is so simple, the honey enchilada glaze. It is just uh, two parts enchilada sauce, just out of a can, okay. and one part honey. Simple. So I will mix that up. What I'm going to do is just mix in my enchilada sauce. and I'll probably do about a cup or so, but you can just kind of eyeball it and about a half a cup of honey. Yeah. You want to pour that in and I'll just whisk it in. Make sure your honey is at room temperature. It's a lot easier to work with. Yeah. And a lot of times, too, I'll put this on the stovetop and just get it simmering oh, just yeah. a bit. Oh, yeah. Um, Very good. You can also put this on your meatloaf, like the last five minutes when it's baking, and it'll just kind of glaze on the meatloaf as well. Gonna be great. We're so happy to have you, Tiffany. Thank you so Thank much you so for being much for here. Me. Man, a good partners. We love our guests on the show. Man, we're so proud to have Tiffany here. Great dish. You guys, the recipe will be on nwahomepage.com. This is cooking today.